Hey everyone, Fred here, AF Math and Engineering. Today we're going to do a question on uh, reactions on a pin beam. Okay, so what we've done earlier is we, we had a beam that was just one piece and we could just take the reactions of the whole beam at once and, and it was nice and simple. But, you know, this is something that your professor is definitely going to throw in your midterm uh, or your final because it's a little bit trickier is that when, when there's a pin in the beam, okay, if we take the whole reactions of the beam as one with the pin in it, okay, we're going to have an extra force in the x direction, okay, and because of that we are unable to solve because we have too many unknowns, okay. So what we do need to do is we're going to have to break it up, okay, so we're going to take this piece, we're going to cut it out, we're going to cut this piece out and we're going to solve it individually, all right. So what we have here, okay, we have a hinged kind of pin system here, all right. So what that looks like is we have our like it's like a little bit of a roller there with a pin and it's on here on, on the on the surface there. So it's allowed to kind of rock in the x direction but not in the y direction, okay? So this only has a reaction in the y axis, okay? Same with the roller, only an axis uh, in the y axis is the reaction, okay? And if, if it wasn't like that we actually wouldn't be able to solve this question. So, you know, keep that in mind, all right? So what are we asked to do? We're asked to find the reactions in the beam. All right, so let's go ahead and let's do that. We are going to start with section DE. Okay, so I cut section DE out here. We have a little cut here of our free body diagram. Point D on the left, point E on the right. And let's go ahead and start with drawing the reaction for point E. Okay, so this is going to be, we're going to call that EY. So the reaction E in the Y direction. Okay, so this is the trick, all right, is when we have a pin here, okay, we have a pin. We are going to write the reactions at point D, okay, and a pin is resisting movement in the Y axis and in the X axis, okay, so that means that there's going to be a reaction in the Y and there's also going to be a reaction in the X, okay, perfect, this is six meters, that distance, all right, and well, what do we do here? Okay, so what we need to do right off the bat is we need to find out what EY, what DY and DX are. So right off the bat, okay, by taking the summation of forces in the x direction, say that's positive, okay, well, we only have one force in the x direction, right? Say that dx, okay, and uh, all the, the summation of all the forces in any direction or the moments is equal to zero, right, as always. So we can say that dx is equal to zero, okay, and that's it, dx is zero. Okay, that's fine. So let's go ahead and move on to dy and ey. So by taking the moment at either point D or point E, okay, if we take the moment positive direction, so if we take it at point D, okay, let's, and we only have one force here other than the, so we don't use D uh, in our moment equation because we're at point D, there's no distance to D. We can say that in the positive direction, okay, we have ey, it doesn't really matter, but ey times six, and we don't have any other forces, so that's equal to zero, right? So what does that mean? That means that EY is equal to zero, okay? And if EY is equal to zero, DY has to be equal to zero. Okay, so we've found out our unknowns, okay? We've found out what EY is, okay? The reaction at E is zero, and the reaction at D is zero in both the X and the Y direction, okay? So this is kind of the tricky part and you kind of need to pay attention here is now we need to go ahead and we need to cut out this section here. But as you'll see, because now we know what dx and dy are, all right, we can solve for this pin now, the reaction's here, okay? If we didn't know what d was, we couldn't solve for b because there'd be too many unknowns. So let's go ahead and let's cut out our free body diagram of section b, c, d, okay? So Right here we have our, well, let's start at point B, okay? So we have point B here and point B we're going to once again say that we have our BY and our BX, okay? That's point B. We have point C here. C is a roller support so we have uh, just our reaction at, you know, in the Y direction. We also have a 15 kilonewton force in between B and C. Okay, that's let's just separate these so we don't get confused or lost. All right, and this is two meters. This is two meters, 
and this is also a two meter distance here, and well at point D. So since we have the reactions in this direction that we assumed for point D here, okay, when we look at it from this side, all right, in order for this system to be in equilibrium, dy and dx need to be equal but in the opposite directions, okay, that's just basic Newtonian physics there, okay, so we have dy and we have dx, okay, perfect, but, and we have what dy and dx are, okay, we know that those are both equal to zero, perfect, so, and, you know, I, I was saying we'd have too many unknowns, okay, if we didn't know that dx was zero, we would have, uh, when we took the summation of forces in the x direction, we would have bx minus dx equals zero, and with no way to solve for bx or dx, so we'd have one equation with two unknowns. So that's why we needed to find dx is equal to zero, because now we know that it's taking the forces, summation of forces in x, uh, as I'll show you, okay, we have that bx is equal to zero, as you can see, right? Or we have, you know, let's just write the whole thing out, dx equals zero, d and dx is zero, so we have bx is equal to zero, okay? So let's go ahead and solve for some more stuff. So what do we need to do here? Well, we do need to solve for CY, okay? We need to find out what CY is, and we can do that by taking the moment about B, okay? So let's go and take the moment about B. We can say that's in the positive direction, okay? And, oh, right, so what do we have here? Well, we have uh, 15 kilonewtons here downwards, okay, and that is in the negative direction, okay, and that is two meters from B, very good, and, well, we have CY here, okay, that's in the positive direction, and that is four meters, right, four meters from B, okay, and that is all equal to zero, DY is zero, so we don't need to include that, okay, and if we go ahead and move the 30 to the other side, right, we have 30 divided by four, that is going to give us, okay, a, where CY is equal to 7.5 kilonewtons. Perfect. So, now what do we do here? Let's take the summation of forces in the Y direction, where up is positive, okay? Now that we know that CY is 7.5 kilonewtons, right, we have negative 15 plus 7.5, plus by equals zero, and that will give us that by is also equal to 7.5 right? kilonewtons. Okay, so they're both equal. And that's, uh, that's pretty much it, right? That's it for that. We know that by is equal to 7.5 kilonewtons. Now, what's left to do? Well, the final step here, okay, that we need to do in order to find the reactions of the beam, okay, because this is a cantilevered beam, so we're going to have a multiple, multitude of reactions here, okay, is we need to cut it one last time, okay, so let's go ahead and let's cut it at AB here, okay, so this is our AB section, all right, so at B, like we said before, with the reactions, okay, is we have equal and opposite reactions, right, so if BY and our BX uh, directions are assumed here as upwards and to the right, then they need to be the opposite when we cut it from the other side. Okay, so we have by, and that's equal to 7.5 kilonewtons, right? Okay, we have our bx, and that's equal to zero, right? As we discussed before, we know that bx is equal to zero. And let me just kind of highlight these so we don't get lost here. We know where we're going. All right. So. What else do we have here? Well, we can, we have a reaction here at point A, okay? So we have moment at A, and because it's a cantilevered beam, right, it's resisting in the X, the Y, and it's also resisting any uh, twisting motion, right? So the reaction is developed there as well. So we have AY, and then we have AX. Sorry, it's a little cramped diagram there. And our distance here is six meters. Okay, so, well, what do we do here? Let's first start by taking the moment about A, okay? Because we want to find that reaction here, okay? So let's go ahead and say that that's positive, and we're going to include that moment reaction, okay, at point A. And, well, we have a negative 7.5 kilonewton force, and the distance to that 7.5 kilonewton force is six meters. And that's equal to zero. 
So if we go ahead and we work that out, our moment at A, our reactionary moment, should be 7.5 times 6, and that should be 45 kilonewton meters. Excellent. All right. So that's, we've found the moment reaction, okay, well, that's what we're asking the question. We found the reaction of the moment at point A. Let's go ahead and find our other reactions here. So we know that, and I'll just show you how to do, I'll, I'll just write it out here, you don't need to do this, you know. You can see, obviously, that the, uh, the x direction reaction is going to be zero because bx is zero and there's only two forces in the x direction, okay, so we can say that ax minus bx equals zero, when we have bx is zero, so ax is equal to zero, okay? But, remember to write that, okay? Because ax is zero, okay, it doesn't mean that you don't need to write ax, okay? You do need to write that ax is equal to zero because it's, you know, you still need to indicate that there is no reaction. Don't just write nothing, okay, because you'll probably lose marks for that. And let's finally take a look at ay, okay? And you know, AY is pretty straightforward. There's only two forces in the Y direction, okay? So in order for them to be equal to zero, AY needs to be the opposite of BY, okay? So let's just go ahead and write that out. Where up is our positive direction. So the forces in the Y direction. So we have negative 7.5, which is BY, and then we have plus AY equals zero. So AY is equal to 7.5 kilonewtons. And that is it. All right, so we solved for the three reactions, okay? One, two, three. We found the, the moment reaction, we found AX, we found AY. So, I mean, what, what are the tricks here? What, what, what do we take away from this video? Then one of the things is, is that we need to, whenever we see a pin, we need to break the beam up into simpler pieces, okay? And we need to, you know, be able to make equations that we can solve by eliminating variables, okay? Because when there's pins, there's too many variables. Also, we need to know the different types of supports and reactions, okay? So we needed to know in this question because it was a cantilever beam that we had a moment reaction, okay? If you, if you forget to put a moment reaction in there, I mean, you'll probably get a zero in this question. So know that a cantilevered beam has three reactions. You know, if this was a pin, it would have two reactions and so on and so forth, okay? So there's no substitute for practicing a lot of these questions, but I hope this gave you some good ideas on how to begin to solve these types of problems. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.